Today, we're gonna to be talking dirty air, what it is and why it makes overtaking so difficult. Now, in Formula One lately, there's been a lot of talk about trying to get cars to overtake better, and the new rules regulations for 2017, or at least the preliminary ones, don't seem to be doing much to alleviate that. And it's a big talking point. Now, the main reason that is, is because when a car is following another car in such a situation that it might be able to overtake, it's getting slowed down by something that is commonly referred to as dirty air. Now, obviously, if you already know what dirty air is, you don't need to watch this video. This is for those who don't know what it is. So what is dirty air? Well, it's a really loosely thrown around term and it can come in many ways. But basically, the fundamental gist is, is that it's air thrown off the back of the car and what this means is that you have a combination of small scale and large scale eddies in the flow. What do I mean by that? If we imagine a car just going along in the straight free stream, we can imagine we've got some free stream clean air coming in as the inlet. This car will be going along it's going to be getting fed really nice air to all its aerodynamic devices. It's going to be running pretty much as designed. But then as it goes along, we've got lots of little wings and other things on the car. So if you've look, watched my other videos, you'll know that if we have a wing like that and the airflow is coming along from the front that way, as it comes along, it will make a tip vortex off the end. Sorry for the crude drawing, but if you really want some more detailed stuff, I have quite a few other videos on this sort of thing. So we have a vortex coming off the end of our wing. An F1 car is littered with wings. They are all over it. Lots of little tiny veins and stuff like that. Now these produce lots of little, little vortices. Now when vortices go back through a flow, eventually, usually they will end up breaking down. When they break down, they form turbulence. Now turbulence is basically lots of small scale chaotic eddies. So lots of tiny little swirls. That's why I'm indicating with these little dots here. And turbulence generally can have differing properties in the flow to what you want. In some cases, it leads to improved flow attachment. In other cases, it makes it worse. So it's very unpredictable. On top of the turbulence, we have the big scale vortices. So we've got the ones coming off the rear wing, front wing vortices that are still surviving by the rear, although they're pretty weak by that point, but mainly rear wing vortices and anything coming from the floor and diffuser is going to get channeled back here. Now, those big vortices are far more, more coherent structures and they won't break down until much further back, typically around the other car or maybe even further back depending on the wing design and other aerodynamic factors to do with the atmosphere. Now, why is turbulence a problem? Well, like I mentioned before, you have that unpredictable behavior on your other car, but also turbulence can shorten your length that your vortices last. So F1 cars and other race cars use vortices to control their flow around their underfloor and on their bodywork, things like that. Increasing turbulence increases vortex dissipation rates. The higher the turbulence level of your airflow is, the shorter your vortex lasts. If your vortex only lasts a short distance, you will end up with your car not performing as well as you expect. So the turbulence will generally degrade the quality of your car's airflow. In addition to that, the turbulence can cause cooling problems. Increased turbulence will make it harder for the fins of the radiators to operate, not by a huge amount, but when you're operating on the ragged edge of cooling, you can end up with problems that result in a couple of percent drop in cooling capability, which means you have to now start cooling your car down on the straight. In addition to that, while we're on cooling, this car here's wake is not stationary. So this car here is moving forward, right? This wake is being brought, being brought forward by the car as it's moving along, which means that this airflow here actually has a net velocity that way. So this car at the rear is actually seeing less effective velocity on it because of the wash from the car in front of it. This means that the actual airspeed going through the radiator and over the wings is slower than if it was in free air. So again, we get further reductions in cooling, we get further reductions in downforce, which are generally bad. In addition to these problems here, Having this upwash from the car in front is also an issue. Any car producing downforce will have an upwash. Upwash means that the flow is going to have a vector seen from the rear car in that way. If the flow is going up that way and your wings trying to go push the car down, it now has less angle of attack. So if your wing now has an airflow coming up on it, even if it's up by like a degree or two, you're going to get a considerable loss in your downforce because your wing is seeing the airflow come at like that instead of like that. So again, another thing that's causing downforce reduction. What makes this worse is you also get fluctuations in this because as you move in and out of the car's wake, it can go up and down and it makes it really difficult to control the car. The unpredictability of these 
flows and vortices and turbulence also means that any flows that you've got that are holding on by a ragged edge can detach pretty easily. So if you imagine we have our side pod here and we have our flow going along down the side pod normally, if we have our turbulence coming through here or our large scale eddy, and our large scale eddy is basically making the flow oscillate up and down as it rotates around, we end up with this flow will get tripped and can get stripped off here and separate. This can increase our drag as well. So you can see that there's a pretty big problem following behind cars. And the biggest problem is, is that the higher downforce your cars are running, the more you're going to end up with this as an issue. And it's also down to efficiency in downforce as well. If you have a car that's producing a lot of really big vortices off the back or a big turbulent region, it's going to be worse for following if you're all high downforce cars. Things like touring cars, more specifically Australian V8 supercars where you may notice they hang right off the back super close. Those cars aren't making a huge amount of downforce at all. So they don't really feel it when they're close up behind. Whereas any sort of modern single seater types that have big wings, they end up getting huge amounts of downforce. So they end up with big effects the second this dirty air is hitting it and you're following in the dirty air. It's a big problem and something that needs a lot of thought to resolve. I'll probably be doing another video later on my proposed solutions for how to get cleaner airflow to make sure that cars have better passing opportunities in F1, but only if the demand's right. So if you like this video, make sure you leave a comment below. That's the fundamentals of dirty air explained. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button and check out my other videos. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.